trend towards Dire, like, that's always seems to be, especially at the big lands. Um, for online play, for whatever reason, Radiant is preferred, then you get to the big lands and a few teams are like, hey guys, Dire is actually really important because you get Roshan and stuff, and then suddenly everyone's pay playing Dire. But... I think a lot of that comes down to Dire tends to be safer when games are going longer and on land. You go for more of those... Uh, more reliable strategies, I guess. It's very yep. interesting that MVP Phoenix themselves ban out the Tusk in the first stage. I don't think that's the scariest hero that Vega could have picked up, in all honesty. And since they have first pick, I, I really do like MVP when they start out oh, with the Tusk. Phoenix Are they taking Doxia? Then they must be about taking Doxia. There are so many good heroes okay, in this IO. pool. Yeah, they'll go for the IO first. Yeah, they don't. They're not playing with Febby anymore, who used to be the IO player for them. But um, I'm guess we'll be seeing Dubu on this one. Not entirely sure who's who's it going to be. Febby played a really sick IO when he was with the MVP Phoenix team, but something the team as a whole are uh, pretty comfortable running. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it is Dubu. I could be wrong though. It's not something MVP Phoenix pull out all too often, but the response from Vega, at least for now, is just going to be that Dazzle and probably the Darkseer. Darkseer! No. It's a Bristle, wow! Okay, no, that's very interesting. They know MVP Phoenix Classic, like, I or Bristle, but I don't know if that's what they had in mind, just because Phoenix, that was like the March strat. March was the Bristle, like it was March and Febby who would do this Bristle IO in the offlane. Um, it's no longer March and Febby on this team, so yes, MVP's classic strat is the IO Bristle. They were kind of one of the ones to pioneer, but I'm going to be Phoenix. I'm just thinking, let's just like IO Tiny or something here. Yeah. Ten seconds. They are taking a little bit more time to think about this pick, but I don't think that's necessarily because they Five wanted the Bristle, but more that they want to work around it. Bristle is definitely abusable when picked up this early. Yeah. I don't think they they were not expecting a Bristle to be. No. 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 I don't think it's maybe. Maybe they were playing the Bristle. I don't think it's a big problem that they don't get the Bristle. It's more like the, oh, they have a Bristle. Does this change our strategy? Is this... Because yeah. Bristle's one of those heroes you see sometimes sent mid against Io Tiny. And uh, typically Vega do run the Bristle in the mid lane for no one. So it's an okay matchup for Bristle. He's fairly durable. He can just kind of bottle crow if he needs to. Um, but I think it's still a dangerous matchup where all it takes is one slight misstep yeah. and you're tossed under your tower, slowed by a tether, and you're dead, so... Yeah, that's usually the only way you'll kill the Bristle, but just outside of the lane, too, Bristle's pretty good against the IO Tiny combination. Your Avalanche toss, 9 times out of 10, isn't going to be enough, unless the Tiny's ridiculously farmed or the Bristleback's ridiculously underfarmed. And he is going to have the Dazzle support, too. Or maybe down the line, if we see something like a Bane for Vega or for MVP. Yep. Yeah, it could also put a lot of pressure on these lanes. Yeah, so I'm curious to see Vega and MVP where they go next. And Darkseer are going to be a hotly contested Vega hero, as I've got to imagine. Darkseer. Yeah. So, well, with Bristleback and Iron Shell chucked in a Bristle as he runs in and fights is always going to be good. Plus, so. the surge to stop him from being kited around nearly as much. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I think Phoenix should be heavily considering a, a Darkseer ban to go with the Brood ban. A Brood also. A, or you want to be taking out against yeah. Vega, especially when Five you know you're going to be running like a IO Tiny dual lane, you won't have a great answer to the Brood and the safe lane. Yeah, this is this is definitely true. Dual lane against Brood, it doesn't really matter what the dual lane is, it's just so hard to manage. Yeah. Yeah, there's you unless you've got like a solo matchup that's good, like a Darkseer yeah, yeah, yourself like or a... Darkseer Axe, Sand King. Yeah. Although we don't see the latter two. Very and the latter two not being metagame heroes, and also they don't beat Brood hard enough to really yeah. justify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The good Brood players have figured out how to change their builds to actually Five like seconds. Brood is picked into Axe as well as like and they Legion practice Commander. those matchups too. Yeah, yeah. a well-practiced Brood Mag being one of the best out there will not be worried about an Axe, just because Axe is not really a strong hero in the metagame, and because the matchup's at least 50-50-ish. Yeah, it, it played well, and I definitely think it's a good read by MVP that they should be banning out mag heroes, but they're also going to take out the Winter Wyvern. You, you don't want to huh. have a Winter Wyvern against the Io Tiny, but this leaves so much oh, inside okay. the pool. They ban Darkseer and take Slyos, but I was surprised to see yeah. them ban Darkseer since they had first pick, but it's because they want to play the armor game and also get some more kind of reliable lockdown, and the, the Darkseer's got the vacuum, which is like a once every, what, 35, 40 seconds or something? I don't even know the vacuum cooldown, but it, it changes every few packs. Uh, Slider just, yeah, 8 second cooldown crush, can spam it out and offer uh, a lot more minus armor to go with the Dazzle. And Bristle, it's all physical damage. Now, how do you think they're going to lane this Slider? Do we think we see Mag's hero yet in the Bristleback or the Slar, or wanting to pick up something else? Hmm. That's a good question, because, I mean, look at Pasha's icon, he is... He's he plays slider. it all the time in the safe lane. Vega's one of the teams that do tend to mix it up a little bit more, rather than just put the slider always in the offense. Yeah. 
If they were planning that, though, I, I feel like they would have just taken the Dark Seer, though. Um, yeah, probably. I guess there's a risk you take Dark or Slada, Phoenix wants Dark or Slada as well, they would take the other one, so yeah. uh, your safer option is to pick the one you want more and ban the other. But here we go. Yeah, there's, it looks like it is there's going to be Mag on the Slada. Pasha's hero, I want to say, on the Ember. I think they run Bristle mid, not safe lane. Ember is not a hero you want against Iotani, so that's almost guaranteed to be for Pasha. Yeah, I definitely like that lane matchup now. But for MVP Phoenix, they have the Spirit Breaker, and this is a hero that they work with very well and adds to the uh, global presence. I mean, both Slider and Ember can both cancel the charge, though. That's this something true. Uh, important to note. And it's not, you have to be very precise with the timing of the crush or the Searing Chains, but these, these players won't have any problems with that. Oh, another Bane for MVP Phoenix. This is going to be really annoying in the laning stage for MVP to set up for maybe a tiny combination or just a toss back. But yeah. uh, e even more than that, just the amount of poke and single target disable, really good against the Bristle too. I think it was a, definitely a good pick to go yeah. for MVP, it just that shores up their lanes a bit. It's a good setup to what could be their last pick, good lane control. Uh, can Five bully the slider a bit, it will bully the slider very well in lane. And I think the last pick they want is maybe something Reserve like kind of tempo trolley with a bit of snowball potential. There are like standard carries like Jug and all that, but I don't think that gives them enough like reliable lockdown slash utility. I'd much rather see like a Queen of Pain or a Corlina, yeah. because these are heroes that can burst down a hero for the start of the fight, which if only they've got the Avatos combo to turn it into an insta 4v5 right now, but if you have like a Queen of Pain who hits an Orchid timing against Ember, or you have a Lina who can instantly blow up a Slada, prevent the crush crushes from coming through three to four times in a team fight, that to me offers more than picking a standard like safe laner like a Jug. Um, other hero that is always fun to see is Magnus. Uh, I, I say that because I saw Navi <laughs> pull out yeah. two Magnus games yesterday to beat your Frankfurt Major Champions and. It's always like you pick the Magnus when you've got a hero that can benefit a lot from the Empower, and Tiny sure does, so. Yeah, I think the ban from Vega, though, the Sven, would have been really good just because of how much minus armor Vega have. You, you kind of need something like that Warcry, and there's not another great replacement for it. Yeah, uh, that's a good point. It actually would have been a, a really good Vegas last pick for MVP Phoenix. And we'll see the Abaddon ban coming out from MVP, but I think the biggest issue for MVP right now is that they are just lacking that ability to get those instant kills at the start of the fight. The only hero that's really vulnerable right now is the Dazzle and, to a lesser extent, the Ember Spirit if he gets jumped. But that's going to be kind of hard to pull off if, if he has any yeah. vision or control over the situation. Solo should be far enough back. There's so much meat on the front lines with this Bristleback Slider. Hmm. Find out soon enough what MVP want. They can see Vega's last pick, which will be yeah. uh, probably Solo's hero in the support role. Disruptor. Okay. I think it's Yoma Disruptor and then Solo Dazzle, yeah. but, but regardless, they're both adept on both of these heroes. Yeah, that's that's a just classic Vega support. They really like it. Um, glimpse, I, I mean, people always talk about you can glimpse back the Spirit Breaker charge, but I don't think it's actually like a counter by any means, because normally the charge will hit and then, because it takes a while for the glimpse to actually push him back, and then he gets the stun and then he goes flying back, and sometimes it even helps the Spirit Breaker. Oh, TA, nice. <laughs> All right. They're just going to fight. Minus armor with some minus armor of their own, they get a QO classic, which puts Tiny into the safe lane, most likely. I don't think you really want to safe lane a TA, but they've got a really good mid lane for QO because of the Bane pick. So it's like IO Tiny safe lane, Bane TA mid. Um, and I think just deciding that IO Tiny is not going to. There's not like a hero at mid they need a crush. It's not like there's a squishy Lena or Ember. It's yeah. going to be a Bristle who can't. Like, you might get a kill, but. If it's played well, you're not going to get one, so they're just going to do something where they farm the mid lane and just harass the Bristleback, not look look for kills. Rev is going to be a little bit left alone down that bottom lane. He's going to have a terrible time, especially yes. with the Disruptor. It's a really difficult lane for him, but still, I, I really like the, the power of the Tiny and the Templar Assassin when they're partnered up with these two supports from MVP Phoenix, and I think it works well given the environment in their team, with MP and QO being so important for them. Yeah, uh, the Bane is very much a key hero as far as the lockdown goes to deal yeah. with Ember. I mean, all, all three of these cores, they're all melee, they could struggle to get to the Bane. There's a lot of ways to cancel a grip, but if you're getting a decent duration grip off and like just hold on to it till let's like the Searing Chains, the Glimpse is being used, suddenly you're looking at a dead Ember or Slider. Even on the Bristle, even if he doesn't die, you're draining his mana, preventing additional cool space coming out, so... Uh, something also important for the Vega side is they don't really have a great kind of mech or Greaves buyer. Like, Bristle can go into the mech, which may be the, the play here, but um, 
Even if so, I, it's not really the, an ideal. He, the hero will have mana problems. You go for a mech and yeah. you're getting gripped, then there goes your mana. You might not be even get the mech off. Yeah, it, it's very difficult. And even without the grip uh, reduction in the mana, you, you have to be very careful with how you manage your spells on the Bristleback. Yeah. When you don't have somebody like the IO to partner up with you to bolster all of that. So what exactly is going on? Mic issues? Uh, I'm confused, yeah. It's been resumed. Are they not picking heroes? We're still mm. on the load screen. I'm not... I guess we're waiting for them to... We're still waiting for Dubu. Yeah, normally there's like a timer to count down out of the draft, but uh, when it expires, I guess we just pop in. <laughs> I don't know. This is new. It's reborn things, you know? Just reborn things. Come on. Um, but yeah, hopefully getting ourselves in soon. I'm not entirely sure if we're paused or not. I heard, I heard the pause, pause noise like ticking away in my head. Yeah, I, I thought we actually got in. Yeah. Five but seconds. not so. Still, I, I really do like the Vega Squadron lineup. With the amount of minus armor that they have, they can very easily transition to Roshan, even though they're on the Radiant side. If they find just a small opening, they can very easily snag that for themselves. And with that minus armor, they're going to be able to scale incredibly into the late game with already heroes that are very good as the game progresses with items. Both TPS scout each other out, so that's a, a win for MVP who prevent their pull camp being blocked off. As Mag with a sentry was planning on doing that. FPS 70. It's, that's, that's not enough FPS. Are these 144 hertz monitors? Um, must I be. Think, yeah, I, I guess so. I, I can't tell the difference. <laughs> well, my casting PC is on like ultra low graphic setting. We've got like yeah. two PC. One, one, one's fine. Uh, the one that they're getting the observer feed from, but the one I'm on is like does not look like Dota right now. <laughs> if you don't start to look bad in normal Dota, my star is uh, taken to the next level. <laughs> Speaking of Slider, <laughs> he's uh, submerged. Submerged and with the golden immortal. Poor guy. Uh -huh. stuck in the ground. <laughs> they really need to fix this this bug. All of the heroes go to their civilian poses in the spectator room. Oh, this is amazing. When you, I, I, I have no problem with it. <laughs> Very well. Very well. Um, uh, well. We'll see. I mean, overall, it looks like okay. We're going to try to get things underway here. Uh, two... Fairly, I mean, fairly typical Vega draft. I think the MVP draft, I mean, they've got some signature heroes like the Templar Assassin and the Wisp, but they're not a team known necessarily for running Wisp plus Tiny. So we'll see how that works out for them. Uh, classic pick for MVP, running the Spirit Breaker offlane. In the past, it was more March playing this. We'll see Forev on it. Yeah, also opening up with that Poor Man Shield. He's going to be yeah. really hard to zone out. I, I really do like Poor Man Shield on your offlaners when you are against, like, Two ranged supports that don't have other great ways of zoning you out when it comes to spells. I mean, Thunderstrike and Poison Touch are okay, but I, I think uh, this is a reasonable choice for him. Definitely yeah, an interesting little pick up here. It's not gonna, yeah, you say it's not gonna help against Thunderstrike. So early on, the first wave or two, it might guarantee us level two. But once we see a few levels and uh, a bit of harass coming out from Disruptor and Ember, he's going to be limited on regen. And if yeah. he gets low runs at a regen, he can get. He can't really go to lane because he can't rely on the charge escape against Glimpse. That's oh, it. by the way, Reason is uh, on a cliff. He's uh, yeah. Go for a early pass, but not there's no way it. Solo goes down to the low ground there. Yeah. That'd be suicidal, and they'll just secure the bounty rune for the Io himself, as he's gonna have that zero minute bottle, and the bottom bounty rune will be given to no one on the Bristleback. Secure, maybe needing some more time. He needs a technician. Oh. I don't know if it's technicians <laughs> to find what you mean by a technician, but uh, it looks like he may be just having some uh, computer setting problems, as uh, we'll see a couple of reconnects here as MVP. Just looking to make sure they get things sorted. Their opening game here. Very important game. Uh, losses today means elimination if you're yeah. MVP complexity. Uh, they've got a both teams bare minimum win at least one game, and even that may not be enough, depending yeah. on you how You really want to win two. Yep. And ideally two in the same series, because yeah. it's three points. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For sure, that, that, that would submit yeah. them in the, in the top four. Yeah, so if you could win a series, you're looking fantastic. Uh, unfortunately for uh, Complexi, couldn't do it in their first one. They still have one remaining against Empire, but I'm not sure uh, how that how that one's going to go, considering the current state of the team. But yeah, there you go. Take, yeah. Say, take your time. To the note on the Spirit Breaker, I think level 2 is about all he really is going to get, and it's probably all he needs. As far as offlaners are concerned, Spirit Breaker can still do a lot with only just access to the Charge and Bash. Um, you compare that to the Slardar, he's going to need a little bit more time to fully come online. A Slardar's going to get some help, though. I yeah. imagine yeah, yeah, Vega yeah, yeah. may just commit the Dazzle to this lane, so we'll see dual lanes from both teams with Vega 
dual lane in the off lane and lane and uh, dual lanes from MVP in mid as well as top. So it, for Vega, they're not helping mid. For MVP, they're kind of completely sacking their off lane. So those are the two lanes where we may see some of the heroes struggle. Although Bristleback, I think, actually does all right on his own. He's got a bounty rune. He'll have a decent time bottle. If he gets a good amount of CS on the first wave or two and gets a good bottle timing, then his mid lane goes just fine and he won't even need any help. So he may just tell his supports like a dazzle, just stack the ancients for me, and uh, well, I'll, I'll re reward you later, like with uh, a yeah. nice beefy bris bristleback. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of emphasis on the ancients. I'd expect this game. You have the TA on one side, the bristleback on the other. There's a lot of ways for them to be able to abuse that farm and to accelerate themselves. Who do you think has the best team at contesting those ancients? Ooh, um, probably for the most part, it's going to be Vega who can actually contest yeah. Ancients. I think MVP are looking to... Their, their lineup will come online a bit later. Like, TA doesn't really look want to run in and contest Ancients all too much. Not against the kind of lineup that Vega have. You can probably see an early point in Poison Touch to take out Refraction. Uh, you've got Ember who's really good at fighting earlier. So, if they can get a good timing on, like, Bristleback's mech, then especially looking at them to maybe try and prevent TA from stacking Ancients. But both teams... Maybe less so contesting them, but more looking to just block them uh, off yeah. with some early wards. I, I think that's probably the easiest way for both of these teams to take away that bank of gold that could potentially be there. The MVP here just uh, looks like both, most of the players are okay, but the yeah, technician, that's, that's what a technician looks like. Doesn't look any different to a normal guy, but... It's because he is a normal guy. Yeah. <laughs> that guy's just a volunteer. Yeah, probably. <laughs> volunteer turn technician. It's just like... Found the volunteers like you're no longer just getting food for these teams. You're now our technician, and you've got to fix this. Good luck. <laughs> Best of luck to the no, technician. The, the staff has actually been amazing. No, right? yeah, the, it's, shout it's out to the great. staff. They've they've been great. Yep. Absolutely. Everyone except Hefla. That guy's okay, yeah, he's terrible. awful. Yeah. <laughs> Can't stand him. But everyone else. Has been. Well, uh, we have Keo back into the game, so hopefully that means we're going to be underway shortly. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, very important game one. Uh, both, uh, less so for Vega. Vega's, I don't think, may, I'm not sure if they're quite guaranteed top four. Probably with a win in their last series, they are, though. Yeah, I, I think they are. Yeah, they have two wins now. Yeah, 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 they, they have, have two wins, wins and then one tie, one loss. So, they're they're all set to be in top four. They're, so, this match only matters for seeding for Vega, which may mean they're just going to be a bit the more calm and relaxed The only seed that really it. matters is the first seed, who gets to pick their opponent going oh, into the brackets. Oh, you get to choose your opponent. Yeah, oh, so 4C and L and Empire are the two teams that can contest for that. So for Vega, this game honestly really doesn't matter that much. So Vega's, what, two wins and... Didn't Vega have a draw? Yeah, two wins, a tie, and a loss. This will be... Or wait, no. Two wins and a tie. Two wins, a tie, and a loss, maybe. Uh, good I... Question. This is their last game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they were 1-1-1 one, one, and one coming oh. in. Yeah, yeah. So they have, a, they have a draw and a loss, whereas 4CL have four wins and a loss with no yeah. draws. So even if they win this game, they can't be ahead of 4CL. Something's definitely wrong in my head, but we're yeah. actually underway. So if Empire win both their remaining two series, they'll be tied on points with 4CL, but I think they win the head-to-head, -head, perhaps, since uh, Empire beat 4CL. Who knows? We'll find out later. QO yeah. mid lane, being harassed. This is like... I guess I expected... Okay, so I expected Bane to be helping out mid lane, but it looks like Bane is going to be at bottom and uh, looking to give 4F some help. So not quite the lanes I expected, and as a result, Q are going to have a slightly rougher time against the Bristle. So I don't think there's a lot of killing potential on the Pasha, unless they get really lucky bashes, but killing potential on 2 Mag might definitely be there. He's going to be able to crush and walk that one off. Ooh. Still a lot of harass. Yeah. Something he's going to be very careful of and... T, uh, the uh, Dazzle instantly go into start stack, can start stacking Ancients and comes back mid for some harass. So this is actually, to me, a problem lane. I'm very oh, surprised Kilo. they don't have Bane at mid. He's going to get all of his refraction burn through. They're not going to dive the tower yet, but still a lot of pressure being applied here. The TA is still farming, I suppose, reasonably uh, well. The big problem for TA is you're 70 gold from a bottle, and yeah. how do you farm that? Charge bottom, though. Pasha, if they get the bash, maybe they can find the kill. Brain I'm not going to throw it out. Wouldn't have been lethal. Yeah. Kuro's got to find a CS. That may, or he can wait like 30, 40 seconds for the gold. Just... This last refraction is going to be very important yes. for him. Uh, no one doesn't quite know like how desperately he needs a CS right now, but uh, probably will end up getting it here. But uh, The good news is he does have the stick, though, so he would have another refraction and 
Yeah, he'll have another he's, shot, but it's still difficult. He's at least not at risk of dying, it's just all that harassment, he can't contest CS. So he's missed out on like three or four CS just because of that. The, the poison touch coming out from the dazzle. Oh, Solo going to get charged up as he goes for the double damage rune. He's going to be able to pick up the DD, and Forev can't really do much. In Solo fact, loses this fight. I don't think Solo wants to fight this. Yeah. The best is going to fly through. Solo yeah. maybe in a bit of trouble. Let's see if Forev can roll lucky, and he does. A shot. This is the first blood on Solo for MVP as Forev is going to draw it. The spear prick getting a lot more space than one would have thought. Yeah. I mean, you can you can't even really blame that one on the seven percent bash. No, you should have just no. ran immediately. Like, okay, you're full HP. He bashes you once, you're not going to die. He, you, you only die there if he bashes you twice if you run immediately, which he didn't do. So, just a bit of a cocky misplay from Solo. Like, it very much like you're like, oh, I have DD. Let's right click. Let's have a right click yeah, battle. But greedy. it's a spirit breaker with six armor and a lot of HP and an orb of venom. Yeah, Spearbreaker with that extra help from the Bane is definitely doing a lot better, and the Bane also is getting a lot of XP, already up to level 3. That Brain Sap's gonna hurt. I don't like that they're giving, like, the Bristleback such a free lane at mid. Not even a free lane, but okay. he's winning the lane as a result. Um, I think QO's quite, struggling quite a bit, and Bristle's gonna have Ancient stacks, whereas QO will not for some time, perhaps. Uh, he's winning the lane, but I don't think he's crushing it. Kuo has That's about true. the same amount of experience, and I, I think he could definitely come back into this, but uh, still, yeah, no one should have had a worse time. Um, yes. The trade-off definitely is the uh, Spirit Breakers. Forev's got to get something done in the mid-game yeah. to be like, okay, TA got had a bit of a rough time, I'm going to make up for it and create some space just by having these extra levels. How early do you think he can make those moves? It's uh, going to be really hard. And it's like, who do you even look to make it on? You can't gank a bristle yeah. at mid particularly and the slaughter is um, just too far away if you go for a charge it's super obvious and that's where i just don't feel like there's obvious moves to make on the map for a spirit breaker tiny can't really now the thing is can someone rotate bottom a tiny tp perhaps into like a nightmare charge i guess if they get a nightmare bottom we could see a tiny tp down but that's a hero you don't want to be just teeping down early on so until they hit re uh, level six on io with the relocate i don't feel like the spirit breaker will be able to get a whole lot done yeah, I think that's fair. NP is getting a lot of space now that we bring up the tiny. He's free farming it away. There's nothing the Slaughter can do to stop him from getting this money. And inside of level 3, it's kind of a similar story with the Spirit Breaker. And he's done this without the support, so getting levels and a little bit of CS. Pasha's going to throw the chains, canceling that charge. We talked about the draft. It's going to show up here. Dubu dropping pretty low, but he uh, has a nightmare. Uh, there's just no killing potential on either side. A yeah. reasonable attempt. Yeah, both sides with pretty good defensive capabilities or on the side of MVP it's just having a tanky spirit breaker. Yeah, this is true. But uh, yeah, Bristle continuing to free farm away at mid. TA, yeah, kind of holding her own now and leave behind by like 8 CS which has been kind of consistently the case from the start so uh, QO not really missing too much anymore. With a one bottle crowing like this is where TA does just fine against Bristle. Yeah, and he's gotten over the hardest part and he's going to be in a sustainable situation this game and I think the situation is kind of slowed down a little bit and MVP are getting a good amount like this game is incredibly even yeah um see who's going to be looking to make the first moves I feel Vega though like their draft is going to come on online and be very scary Ember level six can start teeping around with the fire remnants and just the general like Ember plays you can make Slada similar story and I don't. I, I, the tiny is going to need a lot more farm and levels before he can do a similar thing. He needs to be able to get his blink dagger up, which is just going to happen a bit later than what, what, what we can see from a slider. Slider doesn't need a blink. He just needs sprint and crush to be able to initiate fights in a lot of ways. Uh, to at least be able to contribute, if you have somebody else to open up, and that that somebody would be Pasha. Charge away by Forever. And the Spirit Breaker is going to be just fine. Although in theory, Glimpse is pretty good against Charge. Not until you have higher levels on the Disruptor. So both mid laners hoping to find a six minute rune, I imagine, but Mag going to secure the top one. And it looks like it will leave it there for the bristle back. So it's no runes for TA. Mm. Uh, there is a Radiant Ward around the corner, and I think Solo as well as Yama should be fine. Yeah, they... Although, if he does get a couple of bashes and finds an angle, that hurts. Yeah, they probably just want to back off a bit here. Yeah. Pasha can at least continue to farm a little bit, but uh, Hero can force to continue to bottle crow and. Uh, Bristle continues to be a pretty scary threat, picking up an early vitality booster here against the TA. Yeah, and we see this quite often, just going straight for the Vanguard. You become so strong once you pick up that item. Yeah, and damage block against the physical damage of the Templar Assassin, later even the Tiny to some extent. Pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. A lot of posturing around the map, but not a lot of clear openings. The counterplays have been on point. Yeah, yeah. Um, Sidon now level 4, which... 
not like an obvious timing is pretty good because two points in sprint, two in crush is normally enough to initiate and get a stun on a lot of heroes. Like a TA, unlikely to be able to run away from that. Maybe with phase boots, which are going to be coming out now from Kyo. But if Slider wants to roam and fight with the Ember Spirit, they can look to do so. Right now, though, the Ember barely under leveled because he's been forced out tri lane with the two supports. He's got a rough lane, so he's kept the Vega have kept both supports protecting Pasha, and as a result, they're not quite getting a level six timing on Pasha that they normally would. They're also not getting as many stacks as maybe they would have liked. The Ancients are tripled up, which is fine, but the rest of the jungle seems pretty sparse. Yeah. And no one to con continue to contest his mid lane is being forced to just continually spam at his mana. And um, uh, when the and that just kind of ties up the courier. Uh, so they want it every now and then at the bottom lane. Like Pasha uses it now, and as a result, no one gets forced back to base. Uh, and just all these kind of little things which do, do affect your play. Like right now, there's like creeps on the mid tower. Not so much in damage, but it's like four or five creeps being missed out, which oh, in the early game does make a bit of a difference. There's your Vanguard up for the Bristleback in the mid lane. Incredibly fast Vanguard. He's pretty much neck and neck when it comes to farm compared to MP. But the Blink Dagger is going to take a little while longer since he does opt to go for the treads first. Whereas Bristleback, just brown boots. Yep. Game making possibly a move towards bottom. Finds a, re finds a regen. You'd really love to get a haste more than anything. Yeah. DD's also not bad. Although something more you want a bit later on. Oh, Dubu may be caught out of position here. Charging through. They're going to go into Sioma. Prep, looking for the bash. I don't even think they need it. Right click. The Bane is going to be able to secure it, but still with the Flame Guard going to town. Dupu is dropping oh, low, but oh, he found level six, what? and they're going to be able to drop Basha here. He has no mana left, and Dupu can even survive here. Can't get off of Brain Zap. What's on cooldown, and now Pasha is going to be bashed by the Spirit oh, Breaker. And now going for Solo, smacking him in the face, looking for another bash. He finds it at the perfect timing window. A little bit of heal is going to keep Solo. He through the trees, but not long enough. Double kill for Forev. 4-1 to the start as that fight goes very well for MVP. I didn't notice that the Bane got level 6. Yeah. He's had that for like one creep wave, but still, that comes in perfect time. Uh -huh. Yeah, that was... Uh, I, did he get, not get it from the kill? Top lane, by the way, Mag getting low, goes down to the Spirit Balls. He may have gotten it from like the first kill. The, the kill didn't kill. give him a lot of experience, only 140. Okay. He had like 300 when I looked. Okay, well... Bane, yeah, that level six timing. I, he, I was just amazed that he got level six even before Spirit Breaker. I guess Spirit Breaker has been charging off the lane and leaving the Bane to get some XP. I, I think now that's really the big trade that they got from putting the Bane bottom is the fact that they have this quick Bane script. And now a charge Relocate. bottom, they're not going to be able to get the chains to cancel this charge. And now with the t uh, relocated, excuse me, the Avalanche is going to secure a dominating spree for forever. Uh, they're trying to maybe toss someone like Spirit Breaker onto the uh, Pasha Ember, but he's tucked away under his tower. And this is pre-level six. He needs to be so careful. This could be one of the first times I've seen Ash's Ember not level 6 by 10 minutes in. And one of the few times you're going to see a Bane get level 6 before an Ember. Yeah, absolutely. That That's where I feel Vega were really caught out there at the bottom lane. Bane hit level 6 really fast, and then suddenly Nether Strike comes online as well from killing the Ember. And Pasha, he's still, like, at least one creep wave, maybe two away from this, depending how much they have gets another split. Strike. They, they might just go on And to Grip. It. Grip is actually back up. Do you know that Solo is probably around the corner? Dazzle cannot cancel the grip here. This is true. Do they have an idea of here where the Disruptor is? Yeah, they're just going to open up. Posh is going to be Fiends gripped up. Multiple TP. Shallow Grave there. TP away by Forev. Cancelled by the chain. Fear Breaker is still very tanky, but here comes Mag with the Crush to connect onto Forev. Might live. The Heal Bomb is going to do a little bit of damage. My goodness, this guy is tanky. Charge away. And Forev is going to be just yep. fine. Almost had the the side of fist was like on cooldown for another second, so he couldn't get it off. By the way, no one farming up ancients as you kind of expected this time. Kyo comes in to steal some of these. These are the bigger ones, and that's a bit of a problem for no one. And he's going to have to address this. Takes out the illusions, but still has Kyo to deal with. Oh, the Vanguard. It's so hard to pull the Bristleback off of this, but now charging in. Forev has made his way towards the middle lane. No one's going to get bashed. The Gloom's back Forev. Is that going to save his life? Kinetic Field is there, but relocate and Avalanche does double kill for MP on MP, the back MP line. MP are crushing. <laughs> They're just getting for, going from kill to kill. Forev may go down at mid, but he gets the charge off. Stuns up Pasha. They leave Tiny behind to get a kill, and now Solo is just left on his lonesome self. Grave in five. Don't think he'll get a chance to no, use it. not at all. Ultra kill for MP. That's, yeah, that tiny blink came four. Ember even had level six, I want to say, or at least around the same time. I was, it's going to talk about how Vegas lineup should be coming online earlier because, like, Ember level six and... Oh, Sioma. Oh, wow. He's going to TP into the middle lane. The Temple Assassin's going to be able to blow him up with a little bit of help from Dubu as he secures it with the brain set. That was 
a really weird TP. And I I'll love this choice from Kyo to go for the blink over the Deso. Even though you're on the dire side, the blink to be able to burst down a Dazzle and to combo with the blink of the oh, Tiny yeah. gives you huge burst potential. It's just great synergy for their draft. We've just seen how much damage MVP have been able to pull off. Oh my goodness, sorry for missing. I kill Avalanche. Toss will crater the Slaughter. And now no one is left with a Nightmare. He doesn't have a lot of defensive support. Here comes Ember Spirit. A lot of will damage, though. Here's the chains. Red in the fort. Ryzen will drop. Fiend Script channeled onto Pasha. No one's going to get charged. Nether Strike. Looks like he's going to cancel that one. Brain oh, going to keep Dubu up for a little while longer. Is another combo from the Tiny. who will get yet another kill. Solo is going to be charged up. Looking for the bash. Is going to be held in place by Chains. Blink forward. We were talking about just a second ago. Solo is going to be able to get the grave. Oh. We'll survive a little while and longer. He has another combo in three seconds. Oh, let's see if he's going to be able to find a good opening for it. Mag is going to get the crush onto Forev. Buyback from the Io. They want to get back in. Double kill for the Tiny. And that was just with the Avalanche. Toss is going to be thrown onto Shioma as they charge forward with Forev. Another crush. Back. Trying to get them back into it. They'll chase forward for another. It's a disaster for Vega. Is they're gonna lose Mag 2, toss it from the IO as they go back home. 17 to 3 MVP. Was that what even a was that even a team wipe? I feel like Radiant's that was like an eight. Tower. Like they, I feel like they killed seven or eight heroes in that fight. It really Not just felt five. like it. it. It was more than five for yeah. sure. It was definitely those some heroes who died twice Radiant's in that one fight. Genius buyback coming out from Radiant's Reason. That was just huge being able to come back. It probably even saves the tiny's life because he was just so low on HP. He kept going in. Hides in the trees while he's on like 300 HP, gets up another combo, hides again, but that time around he was in a bit of trouble, but Reason buys back, relocates in, gives him some heals and protection, and MVP... There's just, just nowhere safe right now, with such an advantage for MVP, look at the net worth graph. My goodness, the amount of farm in this tiny TA and the Spirit Breaker also, like, Spirit Breaker has himself a thousand gold on top of his treads, it looks like he's gonna go for a blade yep. mail, just super brawly items, and because that's this game. This gold lead is before they start taking towers, now they get their first yeah. tier one, before they start taking Roshan, which is gonna be on the menu soon as well. Cure with a DD says, ah, screw Dessa, let's on just do it now. now. Yep. yep. Alright. MVP gonna be in a fantastic position, and there's nothing you can do to contest. They're smoking up. They're saying, "Let's make a let's make a move towards this," but it's gonna be close as to whether or not they get here in time. They just don't have the item progression going their way. It's gonna be a really hard sell. Maybe they can pull it off. Roshan is less than half HP. Bash on a QO. Here comes Mag going into the pit. Blink away by TA. She is going to evade that crush. Charging forward. Pasha will cancel a charge, and Dubu isn't going to be able to find a good Fiend's Grip here, but they already lost a Disruptor. Pasha's going to be stunned. Templar Assassin's over on left-hand side as they chase down Ryzen, tethering away up to the high ground. A little bit of an unfortunate spot for him, trying to desperately relocate out of there, and he will survive. Toss thrown onto the Slaughter, Mag dropping incredibly low. Double kill for him, and Kyo is still trucking. Going for Pasha towards the north is on the south. No one is fighting against MP, but they just can't kill anybody. Oh, except and for that coming back. <laughs> oh. And he'll survive. GG or played? 14 and a half minutes. Minutes. <laughs> oh, insane showing. Dude, that, <laughs> they just stomp big, and there were so many. Like again, reason with sick IO plays. He gets the relocate out. He even broke his tether to leave the tiny behind. It wasn't like okay, I'm gonna save my. Like he tethered up there and then relocates, breaks the tether so tiny doesn't go home yeah. with him. So tiny can stay around, get a few more kills, and yep. What a what a amazing that was awesome. and like... great decision making. They were in the pit. <laughs> Everybody gets out. They leave Kyo in there alone, which was a good move because Kyo, if they don't come, Kyo can finish off Roshan. But it meant the Dazzle Weave only.